My brothers and sisters in Christ, people in general, but particularly Americans, love a good underdog story. It's woven into our, our culture from our very founding as a nation, our history, and we're always enraptured with the story of the, the underdog or the, the little guy overcoming the giant against all odds. And in today's first reading, we have the, the ultimate kind of origin story of this, the story of David and Goliath. It is such a famous story that David and Goliath, just those names, have become an explanation of describing uh, a great underdog story. We hear it used in sports and sometimes in political races, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, if someone uh, is up against all odds, they're called David versus Goliath. And th this is certainly true. It describes well the story we hear in the first reading of the, the young and untrained David taking down the giant Philistine. But if we just settle it for being an underdog story, we, we lose what is ultimately the point of the story. And that point is expressed by David himself to King Saul. Saul is understandably uh, not convinced <laughs> about David's request to take on Goliath himself. Saul looks upon David and sees that he has no chance against the giant. But David ultimately is not thinking that he can win as a great underdog because he has a crafty plan or he's smarter, but he simply believes that the Lord is at his side. He sees that God has delivered the Philistine into the hands of his people. And so David goes knowing that on human terms he's outmatched, but he knows that it's ultimately not a human matter, that God is by his side and will carry out his will. And so in this, ultimately, we have not an underdog story, but we have a story of faith and perseverance. David believes that God has asked him to go forward to carry out his will and that God will do so on his own strength, not on David's. And so David, in persevering in his trust in God's will, becomes the vessel by which God delivers a mighty blow to the Philistines, delivers his people Israel. When we combine this with the saint of the day, St. Anthony the Abbot or St. Anthony the Great of the Desert, who was an early church ascetic, he was uh, linked one of the, the first hermits, uh, monastics, not in the sense of the monastic life, but based on going out to hermitage in this way, to, to go apart from the world. St. Anthony in Egypt, out in the desert, was someone that people sought out for his great wisdom. He was known for his holiness, and they found that his wisdom was not contained in words, precise arguments, great prose or preaching, but purely the witness of a devout life. St. Anthony was uneducated. His entire holiness was based on the fact that he put his entire trust in God. From the time he heard the gospel, he lived a life of radical abandonment to the divine will, and sought to strip himself of everything of his and to rely merely on the strength of God. His entire life was one wrestling with the enemy. The devil sought to tempt him through every particular vice to overcome this, and it was only through perseverance by putting himself daily into the hands of God that he became this great champion, this sought-out monk for in the, in the wilderness, renowned for his holiness. And so, my brothers and sisters, through the inspiration, the story of St. Anthony of the Desert, of King David in the Scriptures, we are reminded that all things are in the hands of God. And if we seek out His will and then put our trust in Him, that we have nothing to fear. In fact, there is no underdog story. The one who is in the hands of God is secure, is mighty no matter what we may be of our own accord, for all of us are small of our own accord. But with God's backing, we are giants indeed, because he is mighty. And so may we be convinced today not to seek out our own strength, our own plans, our own agendas, but to seek first the will of God, and then to put our full trust that he will never fail us. St. Anthony the Great, pray for us.